Hi again. So I live um, in the Midlands. Um, we've got some nice rivers, but we've got loads of canals. Um, I'm about 70 miles from the sea, so there's not a lot of sea that's sort of open for me to go to every day. So let's have a look at canals. Now canals are fantastic places, um, but there are a few things you need to know really before you go on it. So let's have a look at some of those. Um, for a start, you need to be licensed, inland waterways license. Now the best place to get that in my opinion um, is from British Canoeing. That's the on the water membership of British Canoeing. Um, that's 45 quid for the year currently. Um, that also gives you um, 10 million quids worth of liability insurance. Um, you're gonna need that if you wanna go on private waters because um, they're going to ask you for it. But also it's a good thing to have, you never know. Um, people say to me, I'm on an inflatable um, sup. What am I gonna, you know, what damage can I possibly cause? Well, you could, um, you could fall on someone, you could fall on a child, you could have your boat, your craft, your sup blown around in a car park, it could damage someone's car. It could be all sorts of things, but anyway, you get it for free, so suck it up. So, okay, so you need that. Um, you will get asked for it occasionally. I have been asked for it occasionally, mostly around manned locks and stuff like that, places like that, um, from canals and rivers trust staff. Um, but anyway, get yourself a license. Okay, let's look at the place. Right, all canals, they have a towpath. That's where the horse used to walk. Um, that's really great because that means if you're out paddling and you've got family or friends that don't paddle they can walk along next to you how great is that also there's always you can always find somewhere to park um, a lot of narrow boaters have um, they have cars that they they sort of leapfrog along in front of them now and again um, people that live on boats they have cars so there's, there's often a place you can find to park so that's really easy um, the water looks a bit murky actually that's about four and a half feet deep at the deepest part in the middle um, the reason it looks murky is just because the silt at the bottom of it's been churned up by the boats generally the water quality is quite good um, one of the things they don't do with canals in this country is they don't release raw sewage straight into it ever it may come from other water courses but it never goes into canals directly because the flow is so little um, which they do in normal rivers so you need to think about that they are quite clean um, launching always really easy because you you know you've got a nice bank to get off of straight onto your board so that's good let's have a look right the next thing I want to talk about is locks that's quite important so let's have a look at locks okay this is a lock, it's designed for the boats to go uphill and downhill. They fill it up full of water, they let the water out. Um, the top of the lock is about the top of that gate at the other side of the lock. They've got lots of places where water is cascading out. Now with your waterways license, you are licensed to use a lock. Um, you can use all of the infrastructure that normal boaters use. But it's really inadvisable. Um, there's a few great reasons for that. For a start, these great big things, that's what put the paddles down. Now the paddles, they wind them up and that lets all the water rush out around the outside of the lock. You don't want to be near where that's being sucked out because you're on a board. If you was to fall near that, you could possibly get sucked through there and we really don't want that. These gates, they weigh tons and tons. When they open, you don't want to get caught behind one of those. That would be a really bad thing. At the other end, when they're letting the water in, that creates a massive wash. You're going to get knocked about all over the place with that. You really don't want to be anywhere near that either. And also, you're probably going to be sharing this lock with another boat. So you could get knocked around by that. We don't want to be doing that, do we? So my advice, for three reasons one for safety two if you're going through on your own you're wasting a lot of water you're wasting all of that water is going downstream we don't like wasting water do we so if you was going through on your own that'd be silly 
if you're going through with somebody else or anyway it's just really dangerous to do it and the main reason is how quick is it to just pull yourself out walk around plonk back in again rest your feet a little bit wiggle your toes on the way around it's a lot better just to walk around and it's so much quicker so let's not go through locks okay that's locks okay we're going to think about our personal safety um, I'm wearing a buoyancy aid. I wouldn't paddle with somebody that doesn't wear a buoyancy aid. That's just me. I like to think that if somebody gets in trouble, I've got something that I can lift them out of the water with. It's a good idea. You could fall off your board, you could bang yourself on the side, you could bang your head on the side and bob around. It gives people a chance to pull you out. It's just a good idea. Okay, leash-wise, I've got a coily leash, because I don't want it hanging off the side of the board while I'm paddling along. It could catch on boats, it could catch on to the side, it could catch on to bits of log and things that are floating along in the water. I don't want that. So I like to make sure that it stays on the board, so it's a coily leash. I always make sure I've got a quick release belt on that it's connected to at the back. So if, this, if I was to fall off and it went the wrong side of a boat coming the other way, I want to be able to release myself from the board. So I've got a quick release. Um, to be honest, I always paddle with a quick release belt on these days anyway. I don't really see the point of it being anywhere else. I like to know that I can detach myself from the board if I want to, if I need to. Okay, getting in. Um, really straightforward. We just plonk the board in and literally climb on, stand up and we're off. Let's do some of that. Another really important thing is on canals on inland waterways in this country we drive on the right side of the canal. Um, there's a great reason for that and that's because canal boats they have a tiller at the back. They hold on to it with the right hand so they're standing on the left. That means when they're passing each other they're looking at the gap between themselves and the left side of their boat. So they're travelling past each other on the right. So whenever you're going past someone, you need to be on the right hand side of the canal, otherwise everybody gets a bit confused. We don't want confusion, do we? Now you can buy really great maps actually for, for the canals, um, or if you look on the Canals and Rivers Trust website, you'll see all of these numbers up here, they tell you exactly where you are. Um, as long as you know what canal you're on, which you should do. So if you look, the towpath goes all the way along. Now there's two sides to a canal, as far as the boat is concerned. That's the towpath side and the off side. So whenever you're talking to a, a boater, You'll be talking about the off side, which is the side without the towpath, or the towpath side. Also, um, people call them barges. Now, narrowboaters don't call their narrowboats barges, they call them narrowboats because they're narrow. Barges tend to be the wide ones, called wide beams. This is the Grand Union Canal, so it's designed for wide beam boats. But some of the narrower canals, like the Oxford Canal, you can't get a wide beam through the locks. So you'll never see a barge down there. You'll only ever see narrow boats and, and cruisers, normal sort of the plastic type things. Now there aren't any tunnels on the route I'm taking today um, but it's something else interesting safety wise to think about. So if you look on the Canals and Rivers Trust website it will tell you about tunnels if you search on tunnels and it will talk about 
kayaking through tunnels or canoeing through tunnels basically any paddle craft um, what it has is a list of different tunnels that you're allowed to paddle through there's some really great reasons why you're not allowed to paddle through some some of them are way too long way too wiggly they may have single direction working inside them so you've got to sort of book your passage and stuff like that but if it's on the list and it's a safe one to do then they're really really good fun and it's amazing what it's like inside a tunnel going through a tunnel there's a number of things you need to think about you don't want a boat coming towards you while you're in there so you need to be able to shout really loud <laughs> or have a whistle um, ideally you'll get somebody to check the other end make sure there's nothing coming you need to wear a light I always wear a head torch a really good one it's nice and bright and I wouldn't do it on my own if you're going through a tunnel you need to be with someone if you was to fall off now okay they're not too deep in the middle but it's really cold and really dark and often when you're in the middle all you can see is a couple of dots of light a long way away they're very deceptive the length of them so yeah have a think about tunnels but do it safely Now this here, this wide bit going out, is called a winding hole. It's for narrowboats to wind in, which means turning. To wind is to turn around. So the winding holes, some of them are really big, some of them not so big, but you don't want to be setting up camp or, you know, getting in and getting out at a winding hole, because chances are a boat will come along and it will want to turn there um, and you'll just be in the way there'll be lots of wash it'll all be a bit frantic for a bit so you, you don't want to be messing about near winding holes really silly place to be so this here is an outflow um, what it's designed for is basically to regulate the depth of the canal there's one over there as well got spikes all the way along that one worth thinking about um, it's basically so the, the canal can't get any deeper than it is now because it'll just flow straight over there but it's worth thinking about you know stuff like that sometimes after some really heavy weather they can be really roaring and you don't want to get stuck there really you don't want to get stuck against those bars or washed over there so just have a think about it just something else to look at on the off side of the canal as well Sometimes it can get really shallow where all the bank has sort of eroded down into the water. Um, and you're going to catch your skeg on that. So, you know, you catch your skeg in the mud at the bottom, you're going to be off the front doing a nosedive and all sorts of fancy stuff. Don't want that either. But also think about this. If, you're, if you've got a boat, a narrow boat coming the other way, and there's a really eroded piece of bank there he's going to be looking ahead and thinking to himself i don't want to be too close to that because i'm going to ground my lovely narrow boat so he's going to be coming across towards you so just think about you know we're here they're here it's a shared space it's you know you don't want to be hit with a 10 ton narrow boat so we can share the space nice and happily i actually never get any trouble off of narrow boaters um, it's very rare they're generally quite nice people and I have some nice chats but yeah just be aware of the fact that he might be thinking to himself I don't want to get caught over there so I'll come across to you a little bit I'm just watching the swallows in front of me coming down dipping down taking a little drink getting some flies that's what I love that's why I do this it's for the nature we've seen so many stuff we've followed we followed kingfishers along the canal at, at Anstey, where it goes right close to the M6 motorway. Got lorries rushing past on the other side of the fence. Don't even know the kingfishers are there. We've seen voles, all sorts of bird life. Swans, I've never had a problem with a swan, ever. People say they're dangerous, they're really not. They might hiss at you if they've got their little ones with them but they're not a problem. Geese, don't have a problem with those either. Ducks, all sorts of waterfowl. 
they're just fine it's all just great we're sharing the space with them we're not chasing them around going after them being silly we're just saying hello and moving on now here's something that's really great uh, well I love it anyway if you look at the corners of this bridge you see the corner there you see all the grooves down it well that's where hundreds and hundreds of ropes pulled by horses have caught on that corner and if you look at this one through the brickwork you can see that one as well as it went round the corner and that's yonks old because there ain't been horses on here for about a hundred years maybe a bit less than that 70 years but that's just great so I have a boat coming towards me right now now the speed limit on the canal is four miles an hour um, they generally only do about three and I tend to do about three and a half so I can overtake them when I'm behind them they get a bit diesel smelly otherwise but they're quite nice people to talk to anyway you'll notice we're both driving on the right and he's just slowed down for me what a nice guy so we'll just pass by hello there hello. lovely day isn't it yeah very nice cracking So like I say, you wouldn't want to end up underneath one of those. It's got an 18 inch propeller at the back of it as well. That's going to chop your board up. You don't want to be anywhere near that. So make sure you're wearing a quick release belt. If it did happen, you can just get away from your board. Hang on to the side and retrieve everything afterwards. It's never happened to me, but it's something I always think about. So that's exactly the thing I'm talking about. You don't want to be caught on that with your leash as you go by. Lots of tree in the way. And look at this wonderful swan with all its sails up in the air. It's being all protective of its young'uns. But you'll be absolutely fine because I'm not going to be a problem to you or to them. Now they're all hanging around here because there's blackberries along there and they eat the blackberries and here comes one look at this oh i'm being said being told to go away so it's not a problem that's because this one is on the wrong side of me go on you carry on go on here we go <laughs> i'm gone See, they were just asking me to leave. Good morning. Morning. Very protective swan back there. <laughs> right, this is a bit I'm looking for. Because my most important thing of the day is blackberries. <clears throat> We've got all that lot there. And luckily, I've been clever enough to bring a box. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think that'll do. That'll be just fine. Hopefully, looking at this, 
you know a bit more about the safety of being on a canal. So, like, subscribe, stay tuned. Happy paddling.